Welcome back folks, so uh, we're going to start chapter 15 today and this is all about cell adhesions, cell junctions and the extracellular matrix. I'm going to cover two topics here, um, junctions between cells and the extracellular matrix. Uh, so let's get started with um, cell to cell junctions and I've broken this down into several videos um, as we've done before. Um, as we look at um, this material, we're really going to focus on two types of tissue. Uh, first of all, uh, epithelium. Uh, those are sheets of shells, cells that are polarized. It means they've got discrete functional domains. So, for example, we have an apical region in these epithelial cells, in this uh, epithelial cells with microvilli. And then the other end, there's a basolateral region. So this part of the cell will be involved uh, with taking up nutrients from uh, the lumen of the gastrointestinal system, for example. Then those nutrients will be processed in the cytoplasm and, um, and then the materials would be um, released from the basolateral region or the basal end of the cell. And so uh, here's a sheet of simple epithelia. So that's just a set of flattened cells, kind of like skin cells. Um, just to give you an idea of what those would look like. Um, these cells are obviously very different than these cells here on the right. Um, when we look at um, uh, mesenchymal tissue though, we're going to be dealing more with the relationship between cells um, that are working together in the extracellular matrix. And so that's a form of connective tissue um, that's more loosely organized. There are two types of connective tissue, well there are multiple types of connective tissue, but um, we can think about loose connective tissue where the cells are more loosely organized. There are some cells attached to each other, um, they may be attached to a rigid scaffold such as in bone, um, or they could be attached to both. So um, over on the right here, here are some fibroblast cells embedded in uh, in an extensive amount of extracellular matrix and you would see similar things if you looked at chondrocytes uh, for example embedded in connective tissue. So those are the kinds of things we're going to look at. Uh, multicellular organisms have means of joining cells together um, to form long-term associations so that we can form tissues and organs and that leads to the formation of specialized structures where um, uh, tissues and organs then perform uh, pro processes and functions which emerge from the individual functions of individual cells. Now the sites where, where cells come together and attach are called cell-cell junctions. And in animal cells we can think about three types of junctions. Adhesive junctions, tight junctions, and gap junctions. And then plant cells have a type of junction called a plasmodesmata, and we're not going to look at those, but just be aware that plant cells have a type of structure that attaches cells and connects their cytoplasm called plasmodesmata. So let's take a look at some of these junctions and I'm looking at this middle part here and these two images on the left to start with. So um, let's start here with these tight junctions. So these um, cell spaces between cells or between body compartments. So for example, if this was the lumen of the small intestine and this was then connective tissue um, we would want to keep the contents of the small intestine from accessing down here into the cavity, into the body cavity, and so we have tight junctions. So they seal the spaces between cells. They prevent fluid movement between tissue compartments fundamentally. Uh, let's move down here and look at number seven. Seven is uh, a gap junction, so it's blown up over here. Um, these allow the exchange of molecules and ions between cells. So. The molecules and ions of a, of a certain diameter can pass back and forth between these um, between these two cells, which are connected by these kind of channels or pores about three nanometers in diameter, formed from proteins called connexons. Um, what else do we have? Uh, number eight, adherence junctions. Um, we'll look at these in a lot more detail, but these basically promote cell-to-cell -cell adhesion, and they are continuous zones. So think about them as like a band of continuous attachment around the cell, and so every point around the cell you find the adherence junction, um, and they connect cells to one another, and they do that via the actin cytoskeleton, which is shown here with these red radiating filaments here. And number nine, in the desmosome are uh, also involved in cell-to-cell -cell adhesion but they're much more focused localized regions of attachment and they attach cells together via intermediate filaments so you can see one half of the junction is attached to the intermediate filaments here on the left and the other half of the junction is attached to intermediate filaments on the other side so effectively you're connecting the cytoskeletons of two cells together using this desmosome structure 
Um, so adhesive junctions anchor, and desmosomes for that matter, anchor the cytoskeleton to the cell surface and to cell surface together. And to do this, they rely on specialized adhesion proteins um, on one cell. So it's kind of like half this moon interacting with the other half the moon. So there, there are two things that have to come together. So if we look at what's going on in this diagram up here, where we're looking at an example of a cell-cell adhesion using molecules called CAMs or ICAMs, um, is what we have is we have some adapter proteins here attached to these uh, proteins which are partly extracellular and partly cytosolic with a transmembrane domain. And so these two proteins are interacting with one another, but they're also a, a, a interacting with their respective cells cytoskeleton. And so we've got an extracellular region here, transmembrane region, and then we're linking through via adapter proteins to the cytoskeleton of the cell on the left and to the cytoskeleton of the cell on the right. Um, Hemidesmosomes down here at the bottom, number 10, um, these are associations between the cell and a structure called the basal lamina. And we'll talk about that later, but that, that's a structure which basically serves as a boundary between an epithelial layer and then connective tissue. So we'll talk about the basal lamina and its structure in a later video. Um, and so they're attached also to the cytoskeleton, as you can see from these radiating filaments. And so what we've got going on here is intermediate filaments again attached to some linker proteins to these adhesion molecules and the adhesion molecules are attached to proteins in the extracellular matrix. So these are all interactions mediated by proteins which are transmembrane proteins and the transmembrane protein is a cytosolic region which connects to the cytoskeleton and then an extracellular region which either connects to the extracellular matrix in the case of a hemidesmosome or to the receptor to, to the um, to the adhesion molecule of an adjacent cell when we're talking about cell cell adhesions. Now, when we think about these molecules interacting with the cell surface to make these cell cell adhesions, think about them as receptors, except they're not receiving information. I mean, they can receive information by the fact that they're making contact with another cell surface, um, but we can think about them as, as receptors in terms of they're receiving another cell's contact. And we can break this down into two categories, homophilic interactions and heterophilic interactions. So a homophilic interaction is simply where cells with identical receptors on their surface interact. So here we've got two cadherins which have kind of zipped together. So here's the cadherin of one cell, transmembrane domain, cytosolic domain. Here's the cadherin of an adjacent cell, transmembrane domain, cytosolic domain. And so the cadherins are interacting and it's E cadhering on one cell and E cadhering on another cell. And so that's a homophilic um, or a homotypic interaction. Same thing happened here, same type of receptor. Here it's an NCAM uh, receptor, two adjacent cells, they're contacting one another. In heterophilic interactions, what we see is we see that the receptor on one cell is different than the receptor on the other structure. Now the other structure can be a cell surface or it could be extracellular matrix. So here we've got, um, We've got some in, uh, proteins called integrins, which are involved in, in attaching cells to the extracellular matrix. And so here is an alpha-5, beta-3 integrin um, uh, receptor protein, and it's attached to fibronectin in the extracellular matrix. And so the two molecules are different, and so that's a heterophilic or heterotypic interaction. Same thing here. This is a, a P-selectin, and if you've ever seen that inner life of the cell video, the first thing that happens in the first few minutes is you see the action of a protein called P-selectin on the surface of a circulating leukocyte. And so here, the P-selectin protein is binding to the sugars of a glycoprotein on the surface of another cell. In the case of that video that you, you've seen in the life of the cell, that would be an endothelial cell. And so these two molecules are different, and so again, that's a heterophilic or a heterotypic interaction. So let's take a look at um, some adherence junctions. Um, and we can kind of include desmosomes here. So I'm really talking about these two structures down here. Now these rely on intracellular attachment proteins, um, so proteins that are forming these kind of like plaque-like structures, and they link the junction to the cytoskeleton, whether that's the actin cytoskeleton or to intermediate filaments. Um, and these are often connected together, the cells are connect, often connected together by proteins called cadherins. So for example, adherence junctions 
are cadherin mediated junctions so these proteins which are interacting on the kind of outside of the cell they're cadherin proteins and they interact with actin on the inside of the cell via these linker proteins um, and so We've got multiple kind of families of proteins going there. Cytoskeleton, linker proteins, and then cadherins, which are specific to adherence junctions. Um, and so these linker proteins will often vary between the junction types. So you can see the molecules here are different than the molecules here, than the molecules here. So uh, let's take a look at cadherins in a little bit more detail. Um, they're characterized by repeats. Um, so re repeating structural motifs in the extracellular domain that vary from cadherin to cadherin. So there are several types of cadherins. We'll take a look at a few in a moment. And they vary in the repeats. So there are um, one, two, three, four, five repeats in this cadherin. And then this is another E cadherin. And they kind of zip it together down the middle here in the extracellular space. They all have this transmembrane domain. So uh, in uh, chapter 19, when we look at that, we can, we can look at how these, these um, transmembrane proteins are inserted. Eddie, away from the keyboard. Oh, wait, wait, come here. Good boy. Um, we can look at how these transmembrane proteins are inserted into the membrane. Uh, sorry, he's really fussy. Um, and then there's a cytosolic end, and that varies hugely, and that interacts with um, a variety of different types of um, cytosolic linker proteins, which then connect to the cytoskeleton. So best characterizes the, the E cadherin molecule. Um, like I said, it's got these five repeats, and uh, the, 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 re the repeats kind of zipper together. And so you can imagine how when you have a clustering of these cadherins, you get a very tight association, uh, which is what you need if you want to hold these cells um, together in tissues. Uh, inside the cell, on the cytosolic face of the membrane, the cytosolic tail of the cadherin associates with a protein called beta-catenin. Um, beta-catenin binds to alpha-catenin, and alpha-catenin recruits filamentous actin fibers, so um, actin microfilaments, to um, to the beta catenin, and so we've got these linker proteins which are attached, uh, att or which are linking the um, cell surface adhesion receptors to the cytoskeleton. Uh, there are some other proteins as well. There's one here called P120 catenin, um, and that can be involved in um, in in regulating the activity of the rho protein. So that can lead to this reorganization of the actin cytoskeleton, we talked about Rho, RAC, CDC42, don't worry about that too much though. So like I say, you get these cadherins, um, these variable cadherins on different cells. So E cadherins, it's easy to remember, they're on epithelial cells. P, often found on placental and some other tissues. Um, N cadherins are found on uh, mesenchymal type cells like fibroblasts. So we'll talk about the, the switch from expressing E cadherins to expressing N cadherins. Um, and the role that has in, in development and the role that has in, in tumor genesis. So if you think about how cells have to change their behavior during development, some cells have to go from being epithelial-like in nature to being more mesenchymal. So mesenchymal cells are often migratory, so they can crawl around. Cells like fibroblasts and things like that can crawl around. So during development, epithelial cells will start expressing a bunch of proteins things like slug, snail, the zebs, and twist. And so expression of these proteins ultimately leads in a switch from a bunch of epithelial markers, uh, many of which are involved in forming cell-cell uh, junctions, um, for example, the E cadherins, and we'll switch to a different set of markers specific for mesenchymal cells, so N cadherin, for example. So that's important in development, is going from being epithelial to mesenchymal, well, then you can switch back again. Um, but it's also a process which is perturbed during um, processes like metastasis. And that's when cells during cancer can break away from their primary tumor, spread locally, and then invade into other tissues. And the way they do it is they basically start expressing these proteins, slugs, nails, ebbs, and twists, 
Um, and that means they change their cell surface adhesion proteins from being like E cadherins to N cadherins. So the question is, why is that important? E cadherins hold epithelial cells together. N cadherins allow um, mesenchymal cells to contact one another and kind of crawl with one another. And so when you go from epithelial kind of markers where cells are stuck together to markers which are more indicative of a crawling cell type, you can see how that would be important for a tumor to start spreading. Um, so this is a normal cellular process that happens during development, but it's also perturbed during tumorigenesis. And so one of the neat things about, about cancer biology is that if you understand this in development, then you understand this being perturbed during tumorigenesis. Uh, let's finish up this section talking about desmosomes. Um, these are, unlike adherence junctions, which are kind of bands of junctions around the cell, um, desmosomes are more like buttons. They're like, they're, 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 they're focused points of strong adhesion between adjacent cells in the tissue. Um, and they provide a lot of structural integrity. They're like rivets. If you want to think about rivets on a ship, ship's hull or holding two plates of metal together, they're kind of like that. Um, you find them in, in things like skin, um, cardiac muscle, um, um, uh, the neck of, of, of uterine tissue. So um, the extracellular space here between the two uh, cells, which are being held together by, by the desmosome, is called the desmosome core. Um, the desmosome cadherins are called desmocoilins um, and desmoglenes. And then again, there are linker proteins, um, kind of represented by this kind of button of protein, um, which then associate with intermediate filaments on either side. And so you've got the desmoglenes and the desmocoilins here between the, uh, the two cells, the linker proteins in these kind of button structures and then connecting to intermediate filaments. Um, so that's kind of a quick introduction to um, adhesion junctions and focusing on uh, adherins and cadherins and the relationship between these adhesion receptors and the, the cytoskeleton of cells. So uh, we'll continue this when we come back in Cell-Cell Junctions 2. I'll see you soon.